having a discussion with someone earlier, and they said repentance is based off of action, not feeling. But Mm -hmm. wouldn't feelings still be involved because in order to get to repentance, you had to read your Bible and then get convicted. And obviously you're going to feel like guilt and sorrow and everything. Well, it's very interesting, Ivy, because the word for repentance there in the Greek, um, it literally means to change your mind. That's what it means. So, uh, you know, repentance is more of a mental decision. It's a deliberate mental decision that you make with information you know it's it's an intelligent decision you make it's 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 not uh, a decision you make that is that's based off emotions now like you said because we're humans and because we have emotions you know we part of our makeup can, includes emotions it could but here's the thing a, a person could repent uh in tears and a person could repent without tears. Uh, you know, and, and the reason I say that is because Paul, talking to the Corinthians, uh, in 2 Corinthians, he, he brought up this whole issue that there's a difference between worldly sorrow and godly sorrow. Okay, and we'll come back to that in a moment. But Dr. George, um, I'd like to turn it over to you and uh, get your perspective on this. Well, I would add uh, to what you said that there's an important role for the Holy Spirit in Mm -hmm. repentance. He is the convictor, if you would. Um, We as preachers or teachers um, can do our level best to persuade um, others about the importance of the gospel, the importance of repentance, uh, changing your mind, turning away from sin and toward God, Um, and yet I can make the best argument ever, and there will be individuals who will have none of it, Mm -hmm. but God, that is, but if the Holy Spirit shows up, then my argument, good or weak, works, because the Holy Spirit is the one who convicts the listener of the need to repent and to change and to turn away from sin and toward God. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, also what's interesting, Ivy, is Paul in the book of Romans, uh, he said that it was God who grants a person repentance. And so I totally agree with Dr. George in in the sense that what's going to cause that change of mind? What's going to cause that repentance? Well, it, it has to be the work of the Holy Spirit, uh, as Dr. George says, uh, you know, or, or said so well. Uh, Jesus, when he was talking about to his disciples about the ministry of the Holy Spirit, uh, there in John chapter sixteen, he said that the Holy Spirit is sent into the world uh, to convict the world. Uh, that word "convict" means to also means to convince the world of sin that we're sinners of righteousness. In other words, the right way, the, the, the way to get right with God is through faith in Jesus Christ and of judgment, uh, because there's a judgment coming that we need to uh, we need to be prepared for. And so uh, it's interesting uh, because if man is left to himself, then he's going to continue in his darkness. He's going to continue in his sin. Um, Jesus said uh, that no one can come to him unless the Father draws him. And how he does that is through the Holy Spirit. But when that happens and there's repentance, there's a difference. According to Paul, let me give you the scripture. It's 2 Corinthians 7.10, where Paul says, for godly sorrow produces repentance. And again, that word repentance uh, means to change your mind. And, And here's what it means. It means to have a change of mind that leads to a radical change of behavior. It literally means to make a U-turn, if you want to say it that way. I'm going one direction, and then I turn and I go the opposite direction. Um, there's a there's a scripture in Isaiah chapter 55 that, to me, uh, really describes uh, what repentance is in a, in a wonderful way. Um, and he, uh, Isaiah, talks about how uh, we do we do just that that we we turn from 
uh, our sin and we turn to God. Let me give you that scripture. That's Isaiah 55, 7. It says, let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Okay. And then it says, let him return to the Lord. So we turn from our sin. We turn to the Lord. It says, then he'll have mercy on him and then turn to our God and he will abundantly pardon so when we find true forgiveness and we find salvation and we find cleansing from our sin is when we realize that our sin has offended God. And when the Holy Spirit makes that real to us and we realize that, then what comes, uh, what should come from that then is our desire to do right instead of doing wrong. And so in that then is that decision is made to turn from my sin and to turn to God. And so that's what Paul's talking about in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10. So again, it says this, godly sorrow produces repentance leading to salvation, but not to be regretted, but the sorrow of the world produces death. So it, it you know, there, there are some people who, you know, do come under conviction to a certain degree, and they may feel sorry for their sins. They may be sor sorry that you know they're suffering uh, repercussions or they're suffering um, you know the re the the results of their sin and they don't like it, so they cry over that or they feel sorry because of that or maybe maybe they got caught in their sin and now they seem repentant but all it is 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 the sorrow of the world they're they're basically just sorry and not repentance. There's a difference between just being sorry and actually repenting, okay? And so that's what Paul's talking about. There's a difference there. For instance, let me give you this example. Um, in the Gospels, we see Peter. Peter denied the Lord Jesus three times, but how did he respond? Uh, Peter was heartbroken uh, when, when he realized, and he, and he heard the cock crow for the last time, and, and he realized what he did, and he was in such anguish of soul. And if you remember, you know, Jesus came to him and he restored him uh, there after his resurrection. Uh, but what we see is Peter went on to be filled with the Holy Spirit and mightily used of the Lord and, and wrote a couple books in the New Testament. But you also had of the same group of disciples, you had Judas, who also betrayed the Lord. He also, uh, you know, betrayed our Lord in the sense of, you know, gave him over uh, to the to the Jewish leaders. But when he realized what he did wrong, he didn't repent with this godly sorrow. He went out and hung himself. He, he saw no hope. He was he was sorry because of what he had done and the results that per, that that produced in his life, and it drove him uh, to commit suicide. So th there's a perfect example of a person who, you know, is is repentant, and then a person who is full of worldly sorrow. Um, so there, there's a big difference between the two. So let me say it this way again, as I said before, um, it's possible to, to repent and to be honest and to be true and genuine in your repentance and never shed a tear. But it's also possible to shed all kinds of tears and not be true in your repentance. So how do we know if somebody's true in their repentance? We see how they live after they say, you know, they that they believe in the Lord or they've confessed and repented of their sins and, and have changed their mind. Uh, because that's what the word for repentance in the New Testament literally means. It means to make a change of mind that leads to a radical change of behavior. So.